These are the same tactics the establishment powers used to try to scare the British people out of voting for change also. It didn't work there and it's not going to work here. Go meet Mr. Brexit. Can Trump still win in 2020? Despite being 10 points behind Biden in the polls, let's find out from someone who did accurately predict both that the UK would vote to leave the EU and that Trump would win the US presidential election in 2016, which was despite what the pollsters, pundits, bookies and markets were stating at the time. As illustrated by my articles and videos at the time and similarly, I also accurately forecast the outcome of the 2012 and 2008 US presidential elections. So will November 3rd election earthquake trigger a stock market tsunami or just a few inconsequential waves lapping on the market shore? Here we stand just a few days away from the US presidential election with the liberal mainstream media in a state of electoral fever as their preferred candidate is way ahead in the polls looking set to win just as their favoured candidate Hillary Clinton in 2016 was way ahead in the polls. So unlike 2016 there is an edge to the frenzy of their activity given the awareness that the polls tend to be wrong, skewed against conservative voters and opinions. However 2020 is even more chaotic than 2016 as this year there is the backdrop of the Chinese virus raging across the US and especially in many US swing states that is contributing towards new cases of infection soaring to new pandemic heights with deaths already having broken above 230,000 near double all of the US lives lost in all of the wars since 1945. That acts as a continuing noose around the US economy, though that has so far not been enough to fulfill that which the perma stock market do merchants have been proclaiming for more than a decade now, which is an end to this stock's bull market. And the stock market has largely marked time in a tight trading range with all wondering if Trump being 10% plus behind in the polls can manage to pull off another election miracle as he did in 2016. Give me the death chart. We have 32 deaths at this point. Other countries that are smaller countries have many, many deaths. And I think right now we're heading at probably around 60, 70 or 60 or whatever the final number will be. I used to say 65,000 and now I'm saying 80 or 90. I think that at some point uh, that's going to sort of just disappear. 95,000 people ultimately. We'll be at 100,000, 110. We've made a lot of really good decisions. Yeah. No, I don't take responsibility at all. It is what it is. Come on, man. Come on, man. Come on, man. What is he doing? Come on, man. Give me a little break here. But everybody knows who this guy is. Come on, man. Come on. Come on, man. Get a life. U.S. Presidential Forecast Matrix 2020 final update. The pandemic was supposed to play out with smaller successive waves after initial first worst wave unfortunately the trump administration's handling of the pandemic has been disastrous to such an extent that america's pandemic resembles the trump tower escalator with each successive wave higher than the one before it thankfully increased medical intelligence about the virus has lowered the death rate somewhat though this may prove temporary when the number of daily cases starts to overwhelm healthcare systems again. And don't take this as me picking on the US for the UK has been similarly abysmally negligent in its handling of the pandemic second wave, which if left to run would exceed the first peak by around mid-November, with the UK death rate now running at 350 per day and doubling roughly every nine days. So the UK government, instead of acting five to six weeks ago, is now being forced to implement panic measures, hence today's news of a new one, one month long UK lockdown starting on bonfire night, the 5th of November. 
And where the US election is concerned, well, it's the economy, stupid. And where the economy is concerned, COVID ensures that Trump's odds of being re-elected were poor just on this one metric alone. What with the number of unemployed soaring by 10 million to 14 million, GDP 10% lower and a collapse in personal incomes. Then the stock market decides to take a dive last week. All of that is before taking into account the electoral impact of 235,000 dead Americans. En route to what? Half a million by the end of winter? As Biden would say, come on man! Trump always had a poor chance of winning under such dire circumstances. Therefore, my for final forecast conclusion remains unchanged in that I expect Biden to win on 49.1% of the vote with Trump losing on 46.4% with the balance distributed amongst the independents. However, it should be noted that Hillary did win the popular vote in 2016, i.e. 48.2% to 46.1%. Though I have factored in a 0.8% electoral college advantage to Trump in my matrix because at the end of the day it is electoral college that determines who wins then the popular vote. In which respect I expect Biden to win over 300 electoral college votes. So unlike 2016 I am not expecting this election to be close. But what happens if there were no Chinese virus pandemic during 2020? Well, in that case, Trump would have easily beaten Biden on, say, 49.8% to 45.7% for Biden. And could Trump pull off another election medical like 2016? Well, in an earlier video of what happened in 2016, illustrated that when one is dealing with intense delirium and intense mainstream media delusional bias, then yes, it is possible, even if I and many others are un unable to see how, that it could be possible this time round again that Trump could win. And CNN projects Donald Trump will carry the state of Florida, Kentucky, Indiana, West Virginia, Oklahoma, Tennessee, Mississippi, South Carolina, Alabama, Kansas, with its six electoral votes, Nebraska with its five electoral votes, and Wyoming with its three electoral votes, North Dakota uh, with its three electoral votes, and South Dakota, Texas, Arkansas, he has now taken the lead. Donald Trump has 128 electoral votes. Louisiana, the state of Montana, Missouri, Ohio. He has 167 electoral votes compared to Hillary Clinton's 109. Idaho, North Carolina, Georgia, Iowa, Utah, Wisconsin, Arizona. Uh, but we should really just take a moment here and look at this. Holster has predicted that Hillary Clinton was going to have not just a victory, uh, but that she was going to win sub, uh, an electoral landslide. Not only is that not happening, it is entirely possible that Donald Trump is truly redrawing the map the way that he said he was going to. It was Donald Trump versus almost all of the experts, and as of right now, it looks like Donald Trump was right. Donald Trump has defeated Hillary Clinton to become president-elect of the United States. Sorry to keep you waiting. Complicated business. Complicated. This is not the outcome we wanted or we worked so hard for. And I'm sorry that we did not win this election. I love this country.